Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 185, How Not to Do Dumb Stuff. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we're here to help you tech better. We've got all kinds of news, updates, tips, tricks, and some picks of the week all the way at the end. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Well, greetings to you, fine sir. On this wonderful day. Actually, have I been outside today? Hmm. (laughs) I I traveled to work, but I don't even know what the weather's like out there. It's it's mediocre. Last uh, Friday was the first day of June, or (laughs) first day of June. (laughs) No, it wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) The first day of summer, the summer equinox. Yeah. So summer solstice, whatever those... those, all those date-related things that may or may not pertain to when you right. listen to this episode. And what's confusing about all that is that there's such a delay factor because big things take a long time to happen, like seasons changing. <laughs> yes. And so it's the first day of summer, but it can take months for the effects to be felt. So it's yes. not going to get hot till August or whatever. Uh, the Pacific Northwest. Yes. Uh, last week, something that I was thinking about, we were talking about subscriptions, the new video game subscriptions coming, right. TV subscriptions. And somebody was talking about it on a podcast or something, and I was trying to think about what the best subscription that I pay for is. (laughs) Playboy.com. Yes. No. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, But there are so many different subscriptions, and like there's Amazon Prime. We've got another one, a couple more coming up in the uh, follow-up later. Okay. And one that I thought about that I was uh, somebody else. We were pulling up a YouTube video on their computer to watch it. Okay. And I was reminded of a time before I paid for YouTube premium when Mm. I still had to see ads on YouTube. And it was a, uh, maybe the most underrated subscription that I pay for is YouTube premium, not having to get ads. And remind us of what that costs. I believe it is $9.99. It might be $12.99 now, but you get the ability to download YouTube videos. You get no ads on YouTube, which can add up add up pretty quick. Nice. Uh, If you watch a lot of YouTube, you get the ability. This is one that I like, but it might be personal on my phone or on iOS. Oh. And Android, you can close out of the app and it'll pay, play the audio. So if I'm listening to a speech or something and I want to go play some Candy Crush while I'm listening to the video, if you close the app, it doesn't. It gives you the background audio. And it also gives you a subscription to YouTube Music, which is my fourth music subscription service, yeah. I think. But that one's very underrated. Do you, Does one come to mind as the best subscription you pay for? Well, I want to rebut some of the things that you said, just so our listeners are informed, you can do picture in picture type things on your iOS devices by using an app called PipTube. Oh yeah. So So, previous pick of the week, I believe. So PipTube will kind of do that. Yes. Um, It will not eliminate ads for you. What was the other thing? Downloads. On my computer, I can use an app called Downy to do similar things. So there are many things that you can do by not paying the $10 a month that gets you very close to that, but they require effort. Yes. So I would say that the lack of ads is the biggest benefit to having that. 10 bucks is a little, a little bit too steep. But I suppose over the years, the subscription that is probably paid the most for itself, I'm going to do two that I'm thinking of. One is the iCloud one ninety nine a month. Oh yeah, like or, we talked about yeah. just last week. Yeah, the, the ninety nine cents or two bucks a month, whatever whatever it is, so that my devices just all back up to the cloud. I don't have to worry about. It. And it's like yeah. twelve bucks a year. Like yeah. who cares, right? That's probably the best one. And then Netflix has steadily gone up in price, but also uh, up and down in quality and offerings. It's it's moved over the years. But when I first signed up for Netflix to have uh, just the streaming only service, it was like six or eight bucks yeah. a month. Almost all the content we watched on our television was from Netflix. Yeah. And it to, to this day, it remains that way. So uh, I would say Netflix has been a big benefit for us. Yeah. I would, the other right up there, uh, which it's almost too overwhelming to think of all the benefit, is Amazon Prime. Oh, I yes. Mean, oh, how could I forget about Amazon Prime? You know, uh, we talked about it many times, but all the benefits you get for that, for what is it, $129 a year now, yeah. and just how it has really changed society of 
the two day shipping, the free, you know, one day, same day shipping, all this stuff, all the video, the music, everything that's included in that and all the stuff that we don't even use that's yeah. part of Amazon Prime. It's so integrated into my life. I forgot I was paying for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It's but, just like yeah, paying the water bill. It's like, yeah, right. you have Amazon of course. Prime. It's part of living your life. But you get that, you get the video, you get the music, you get all the other benefits. Uh so Whole Foods, Kindle and, Unlimited trials, yeah. uh, so I can read all your comic books or whatever your books. I mean, they're constantly giving things away, and it's like if you're not subscribing to a particular service that is Amazon Prime compatible, they'll give you a free trial or they'll give you a discount. Or it's like they yeah. they want you to consume more and more, and maybe that's bad. <laughs> yeah, but it uh, the cost benefit is very great. yes, yeah. There are so I just wanted to kind of bring that up. There are some good subscriptions out there. And yeah, don't I hate on them. There, everybody has subscriptions in their life, and it's just looking at the holistic cost. And hey, is this worth it? Is does my budget allow for this? But there's a couple of those ones that. I just really, really like having. There's been a lot of hate on applications that have moved to the subscription model. And probably the most egregious offender is Adobe, where they are they had oh. very expensive applications, but now they're like, pay all this money, pay me $30 a month for one app or whatever. And it seems like a lot, but not to professionals. But games and iOS apps and various apps have also moved to the subscription model. Yeah. But before you hate on it, think about the developers who, let's say they... They develop an application and they sell 1 million copies of that. Do you expect them for the re the remainder of their time living yeah. to s fully support that application and update it for $1 million for the next 20 years? Yeah. Well, if you could, if they could get half that many people who pay them 99 cents a month, they can continue to develop and update. And so it's kind of good for both the developer and the user because you get better applications. And so there are some of those that I think are pretty good. It's yeah. still really hard to pay for them. It's still really it hard. Is. But it's, it is. But it makes sense. It's changing. Uh, some follow-up. This one, I don't even know why I put it in there. That tiny phone from Palm, the one yeah. that was supposed to be like the sidekick to your main phone. Yeah, it's your phone's phone. It was like only available on AT&T and now you can buy it unlocked. So the phone that nobody wants, more people can buy it now. Yay. Uh, did you buy one? I did not. Okay. Um, speaking of subscriptions, I alluded to this earlier. Both Walmart and I believe Target's doing something similar now, but the article I have is from Walmart Grocery. They're offering a $98 per year delivery unlimited subscription for your groceries. And we've started doing some of the grocery pickup or delivery at Fred Meyers. We've tried it out a couple times. It is – now there's people like Todd, I believe, would tell us if he was here on the episode or as he listens to it on Get his – Get off my lawn. Yeah, his iPod shuffle. He says – but I love going to the grocery store and being around people and kind of the experience there. But he's a hermit. Yeah. But he still needs some social interaction. So I think that's a safe social interaction. You might yeah. only have to talk to one person. You do have to look at the holistic cost. But for a uh, maybe a parent with a kids or somebody that works a lot of hours and has a very busy schedule, mm -hmm. having your groceries delivered. It's one less thing to worry oh, about. Oh, man. And with the amount... We know some people that do a lot of grocery shop. You know, it's every day after work they go by to mm -hmm. pick up dinner and stuff. If you could eliminate some of that, it'd be worth looking at. So I think Walmart's rolling it out. Target has something similar, and they're saying that they're going to have like one hour de delivery available, which wow. to your place, you live in very close proximity to <laughs> both, so you could have them battle for the quicker delivery. I would not feel good about myself to order. <laughs> I mean, I can literally walk to either place in less than five minutes. Yes. To, yes. So to order that would be bad for the environment. So but for, I, maybe for somebody less able. Yes. Well, that's true. For someone who's less able who, who or who lives farther away, this seems like a match made in heaven. Yeah. Uh, another Walmart story. I think we almost need like a, a shopping, a yeah. grocery store sounder. Do we have a Walmart affiliate like we have a Prime affiliate? No, we don't. Walmart, um, and I've kind of noticed this at the self-checkout, uh, which I will use on occasion. They are using, they're calling it an AI service. I don't <laughs> know how 
much artificial intelligence is involved in this. The cameras that they have there, sometimes there'll be a little screen that shows you, kind of has your face to maybe feel like, hey, they're watching me. Don't steal something. Oh, right, right. But this- Oh, yeah. Um, it's when you're going up to the register, it shows yourself. It shows yourself yeah. so they can kind of track things. Well, they also apparently in a thousand stores, I don't know how many total Walmarts there are, they have this camera system that tries to track- um, if something does not get scanned. Now, some mm-hmm. people are using this for nefarious efforts. They claim that they really want it just for when people, something doesn't scan, it gets missed. It would send an alert to the little checker person. They could say, hey, it looks like that didn't get scanned. They do the weight stuff too, where it's like, put that mm-hmm. in the bag, put it in the bag already, put it yeah. in the bag. Yeah, or- get it in there. As you were talking, I, I went sullen and I looked down and I got real sad for a minute because I now know why they have those forward-facing cameras on the self-checkout registers. It's for face tracking. Ooh. I guarantee you that's what it's for. They're capturing the image of your face so that no matter what credit card or if you're involved with the Walmart uh, purchase bucks or whatever yeah. the plan is, that they are identifying your face and they're building customer profiles on you by what you look Ooh. like. I'm going to do some research. Yeah. I was just going to say, that is your task for this week, Dave, is to look into the privacy policies of Walmart. This article might mention it as far mm. as this goes, but the other stuff. Check into that because uh, facial recognition is big on the privacy front right now. There's yeah. a lot of stories going on about that. So. If my phone can do it to unlock it, you guarantee that those registers are tracking me and building a profile on me. Yes. Are they owned by Facebook? Ooh, possibly. These days, it's uh, impossible to know. When we talk about Walmart, we got to talk about Amazon. Amazon has at least 15 we, more. We need no excuse to talk about no. Amazon. 15 more Boeing planes to expand their air cargo network by 28%. So as we've mentioned several times, they are building out a complete shipping company. Mm-hmm. They they keep leasing more planes so that they don't have to rely on the Postal Service or FedEx or UPS. They can do it all themselves, cut out the middleman. If I they, were you and you were taking advice from me uh, regarding investments, which you should not, nope. I would not invest in UPS and FedEx right now no. because Amazon is going to replace them. Yeah, It's yeah. inevitable. They have been just like Thanos. giving them so much business and they have built their business and now they can just do it themselves. I mean, you think about the volume that Amazon moves in a day versus UPS or FedEx. I'd love to see those numbers mm-hmm. of non-Amazon. I mean, it is insanity how yeah. much stuff they move every day. It is true. Um, and breaking news as we record Monday, June 24th, an early gift to us. Yes. Uh, the new Apple betas, the public betas of their new software that will be released this fall are available. So anyone, not just developers now, can go out, sign up to be on the beta program. Now we don't highly recommend this, especially if you're not super tech savvy. I know a lot of you are. Yes, of course. Uh, but they are betas for a reason. This is pre-release software, so there can be bugs. I actually, on my Pixel 3a phone, mm-hmm. I put the Android Q beta, and I was having some problems with some apps, so I did all the work to take it back off there. Yeah. I um, have the developer beta on yes, my phone and my iPad, them. and I will tell you that I tried last night to use my camera to no avail because yeah. uh, it would crash. It would. I tried to open up the photo. It didn't take the photo. The button wasn't working. So these are the things that you have to deal with with beta software. Now yeah. I get to wait another week, a full week before the next one comes out. I think. You know who knows. Take a word of caution from yes. Dave's story from just yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That this is probably a very similar version that you would be downloading in the public betas. I might. Uh, my phone, I don't want to do it on because I use that way too much. Yeah. I might put it on my iPad just to play with some of the new features. But you know what? You can probably wait till the fall, really, unless you really want to play around with it or have a spare device is a great way to do it as well. I I really want to do this sometime because I guess I'm crazy. I want to buy a second iPhone just for my camera (laughs) (laughs) and carry it around and have all the stuff on my main phone in a case and all this stuff and then have a second iPhone with like the lens and and carry that around. You know what else you could get? What? A camera. What? No, they don't make those anymore. Oh. You just have to use an iPhone. <laughs> True. And one more piece. It's been a while, but Crypto Watch. This was a big one this week. Mm. Uh, the world of cryptocurrency, Facebook, unveiled their new Libra cryptocurrency. Um, it is uh, a very... I. <laughs> 
Dave is quietly shaking his head in disdain. Um, the inter- This is a very interesting thing. It's not like your tr- typical cryptocurrency like Bitcoin where you, you can mine and like get your own. It's basically, depending on how much of the Bible you've read, a one-world currency might yes. ring a bell. Yeah. Um, it is designed to be a currency that is, it's backed by a ton of companies, Facebook, mm. but like Uber and all these major companies are have invested in this. But why on earth Facebook would want to be the front and center of this? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And of course, the world's governments hate this idea yes. and they may make it completely yeah. illegal before it even starts yeah. uh, because as we know, the world's governments love to control the flow of cash so that they can tax it and and exist. Yeah. Government doesn't exist without taxes. And so if you have a currency, a form of currency that people can use to exchange goods and services that cuts the government out of the middle, that's a problem for governments. So uh, one thing that governments do have that Facebook doesn't are multiple armies and missiles and things that they can do to defend <laughs> themselves. Yes. So the chances of this actually happening, I don't, I don't know. That's yeah, a- we'll see. And I don't think it's supposed to come out till next year. So I, some podcasts are obviously talking about a lot of the tech podcasts. Everybody, I mean, it was on the local news. It's it's been very widely, but we have some time. And like you're saying, it might look much different by the time it's actually. Yeah. But it would be based on real money. So you would put. I look at kind of like Apple Cash. It's like, like Disney you put dollars. Money, yeah, or like you know Amazon Coin they have to buy stuff, or Microsoft Coins, or in-game Candy Crush Gold. It's like yeah. I. It's just weird. I think it's a distraction. It's a distraction from all the Facebook's other issues. Maybe so. I mean, I can see some benefits that if you want to. Uh, do things between different nations, doing the exchange rates and buying and selling of money at costs. Transaction fees. It does all this stuff. So it's like, if we could just get all of this in Facebook money to buy things and like Facebook marketplace or whatever, we can avoid all of that. But uh, I don't know how often I would go on Facebook to purchase or do transactions with people across international borders. It's not something I regularly do. No, no. I don't. Uh, know. W- yes, we will see more to come on that. Well, I, you can sadly, guarantee. I'm sure. You can guarantee that since it's Facebook's involved, I won't be. You part will of not it. be doing it. <laughs> um, and I did open up my uh, Coin Tracker app on my phone just to check Bitcoin because I had heard uh, it was down around seventy five hundred, eight thousand dollars over the last couple months. Well, in the last uh, week or so, it has gone back up around. $11,000. It has skyrocketed. Wow. It is currently at $10,900.30 per Bitcoin. And a lot of people are speculating, well, cryptocurrencies back in the news, this Libra coin. Oh, we should jump back on the Bitcoin mm. bandwagon. Whenever you think it's a good time to jump on something, it's usually you missed it by six months. Yeah. So. But you know what you should always jump on? Dave's pro tip of the week. Nate, this week, I thought we'd talk about something near and dear to our heart, inactive accounts. Ooh. (laughs) I don't even know what that means. A lot of people sign up for accounts, and then they let them languish. My wife, for example, I signed her up for a Gmail account, and she insists on using her Yahoo account. Mm. Why? I don't know. But as we looked, I think later on, it's going to be the most visited websites. Yahoo is still one of them. (laughs) So maybe she knows something. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, But anyway, can you talk to us a little bit more about inactive accounts and how it relates to Google and Gmail accounts and those yeah. type of things. So we've talked about this with LastPass before. They have a feature if you're using a password manager and you happen to be able, for whatever reason, not access that account anymore, whether you pass away, whether you're gone in a foreign country, whether you're in the hospital, in and, jail, yeah. whatever it is, you throw your phone out the window. They have a way to set up so that somebody else could get access. Now, everyone has had somebody pass away in their lives, and then the family's trying to deal with getting access yeah, to all so this stuff. Uh, my dad had all of the pictures in his Google accounts, and now none of us can access that or something like that. Yeah. And so I believe it was on the Clark Howard podcast. They brought this up, and uh, I sent myself a note, as I often do, to look into it and Google uh, support.google.com slash accounts slash answer slash a bunch of numbers. So go to the show notes and click on it. (laughs) But if you just search for Google inactive account manager, they have a very simple system there to set up 
your inactive account manager. So for my personal Gmail account, mm -hmm. I went in there and you kind of create a plan. It says, uh, like mine is currently set after three months of inactivity. So that could be for various reasons, right. whatever. After three months, it would send a message to my designee. It will contact you via SMS first. So it'll send you a text message to say, hey, you haven't logged into this. Do you want us to give access to somebody yeah. else? You ready for your wife to have all, all of your account information? <laughs> No. Um, they'll also contact you via that email, a backup email as well. Like if it's just an account you l got locked out of, who to notify. You can add like a little message in there. And then they are able to download all the stuff through the Google Takeout program, which hmm. you can do yourself. You can download all your data if you want to make a backup or whatever. So it doesn't really give them ownership of the account. They just have the ability to ex extract all the data from the yes. account. Yes. Okay. So that's the way it looks. And then you can have it set where it'll delete uh, the inactive Google account after mm. they've accessed it. And I'm sure say, okay, here you go. You yeah. can, um, I'm done with this now. Right. Uh, but it's one of those things that we hate to think about that something mm -hmm. like that would happen. But at the same time, as more and more of our lives are digital and our Google accounts hold so much, so much billing information, account, other account information, yeah. uh, and something like LastPass, bank accounts, all that stuff. I just highly recommend you sit down. You should have a will. I don't mm -hmm. have a will in place. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting everything. Yes, a will. And then, yeah, everything goes to Dave. But having a will set up, and part of that, I know a lot of, uh, there's a podcast, a couple people that are lawyers that do some of this sort of stuff, mm. and I've heard them talk about part of setting up that will is your digital stuff. That yeah. could be more important than the physical junk, my well, uh, great collections in my garage. And what about the hundreds of dollars worth of apps, probably thousands of dollars worth of apps I've purchased for my computer and my smartphone? Yeah. Is my family expected to rebuy all those, or can they have access True. to my account? I mean, there are all these things to think about and consider. Uh, the big question is, do I give the credentials or set up my wife as my inactive account manager, or do I do you because you know how to run all this stuff? Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? Or they should have a secondary person that you can yeah. do. Like because if, what if, if your executors? If not you and your wife <laughs> both go to jail for your tax evasion, <laughs> well, it's probably likely then the next person. Yeah, or an yeah. executor. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I I came across that. I thought it was a good tip. It, I didn't know about Google service for this. So yeah. So to recap, just search inactive account manager on Google, and that'll get you there. Yep. Uh, our five takes of the week, we have been talking a lot, so we'll try to move through these quickly. The first one. <laughs> Why do I always say we're going to try to move through these quickly, I don't know. Dave? It's kind of like our half an hour guarantee. It quickly goes out the window is it the does. only thing it does. So Sprint is the latest telecom to offer a tracking device that uses LTE. So we've talked a lot about the tile and the tracker devices, which use Bluetooth. They're very simple, very cheap. Mm -hmm. Well, Sprint... Uh, AT&T and Verizon now have LTE trackers. So these actually have phone service in them. Oh, so it's wow. not just, you know, their internal network or if your phone's close enough to find it. Yeah, if another device happens to walk by it. So these can talk to the network themselves. When my stuff has gotten stolen before, mm -hmm. if I had one of these in my backpack and I could actually see LTE and GPS and be able to track it down. Um, but they have... Uh, so the one from Sprint is, it's manufactured by CoolPad, and users need to pay $250 a month for 24 months to cover the cost of the device. So mm. that is 60 bucks. I would assume the cost and service for the device. And then $5 per month to connect it. So you're paying $750 Ugh. a month. No, I don't like that. I want to pay the $250 you... forever. <laughs> I want to pay $5. Yes, well... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. There's a lot of things that I want that I don't get. I would love to to get lots of things and not pay for them. <laughs> yes. If only that were something that happened. In Going life. back to our subscriptions yeah. that we were talking about earlier, um, but I could definitely see uh, that this could be very useful in certain situations if you did want to be able to track something like this, or if you were extra prone to like leaving your keys in a park or something like that. It's bigger than the tracker or the tile devices, uh, but that's because it's got a lot more functionality. 
Now, related to that, uh, Saturday, I was hanging out at Chuck E. Cheese, as I oft do with a who, toddler. Who doesn't? <laughs> yes. I was there just to enjoy the video games. And I was uh, there. It was friend of the show, Dylan, his son's birthday party. Mm-hmm. So we were chatting, and he was asking me. He keeps seeing on his Facebook and Instagram ads these advertisements for child trackers, because they know he has a kid, mm. and very similar devices. He's probably shopping at Walmart, and they scanned his face and saw the kid, you know. <laughs> Oh, yes. Todd's going through all his tinfoil right now as he listens to this episode. But I found an article from SafeWise.com talking about the best kids' GPS trackers and wearables. So what these basically are, similar to that last device. I was going to say, just buy the Sprint thing and stick it in your kid's pocket. Exactly. These have a couple more features. The one that they highly recommend is the Angel Sense Kids GPS Tracker. What these are is... Uh, and they kind of advertise them as this, a smartphone without the screen. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to worry about what your kid's doing with the device, but they have like a walkie-talkie type feature built in. They have oh. GPS, phone service. It's like a phone. Yes, <laughs> yes, without the screen. Way back before phones had screens, but they vary in price. There's some, uh, I think our neighbor, one of our neighbors, he's like seven, he has one of the watch ones, so it kind of looks like an Apple watch, but you can yeah. call mom, dad, or grandma. You can store a couple numbers in you there. you have to charge the thing hourly or what? No. The, so the AngelSense one, it says it'll last for 24 hours. Mm-hmm. The uh, Relay, their second best, three days, and the Verizon Gizmo watch will last for four days. So you'd have to get in a routine of tracking mm-hmm. in, checking in with the kids and everything. But I could definitely see benefits. We talked a couple years ago, my... Uh, cousin and his wife were taking their kids to like a family camp thing mm. and they wanted some way to track their kids as they're running around this camp saying hey get back here hey are you right. okay are you on the water slide or where are you yes kind of uh, that kind of thing but technology keeps advancing and it looks mm. like there's a lot of these products available so i'll have the link in the show note also a quick related note to that uh, the circle device we've talked about several times. They have the new Circle Home mm-hmm. Plus device. Uh, so they've upgraded everything. It's got a lot more features. It's a lot more robust. So if you have a bunch of kids running around the home with devices or outside of the home, this is one of those parental services that will give you a lot of control, more control than Apple or Android do with their built-in tools to be able to. And the, I, the thing I like about the, the Circle Home Plus, it kind of gamifies. Mm. Like you can reward kids if they do certain things and right. do all that stuff. The, the big question with Circle is, why does the Circle device, why is it square? Yes. I mean, that's the biggest question uh, out there. I, it, I'll have to, I know the founder. Yeah. I have not talked to him in quite Make a while. Make it into a Circle. I'm going to talk to him about did, that. If, hey, founder guy, if you need some marketing advice, just email me. Yeah. Jelani, please reach out. Okay, an interesting report. There was some stuff with Congress and all this stuff going around. We haven't talked too much about about uh, you know these tech companies having too much control and wanting to break them all up and everything. Well, there was a uh, report that was released, and they wanted to know when somebody searches on Google, like we all do all day, every day, mm-hmm. how often – do they have to leave Google to get what they're looking for? Because Google has those snippets. They have the maps. They have all this stuff that where they've tried to pull stuff in so you don't have to leave it. What this data found for, I believe, Q1 of 2019, Google received 150 plus billion searches. Gee, that's a lot. They solved almost 50 of those searches without a click. 50%. 50%. Yeah, okay. almost 50. <laughs> well, the track record's not billion. so good. Yes. Um, so zero click searches is almost 50%. Uh, 41.5% or organic clicks to non-Google sites. So you just find something in the results and you go, like if you search for something and Not Nerd came up and you went to notnerd.com. Mm-hmm. 3.6% are paid clicks to non-Google sites. So if somebody's paying to do Google ads... Uh, which that number seemed pretty small. You're paying a lot of money to have your ad up at the top of the screen, and that's only 3.6%. Yeah. Um, and then 5.9% are paid clicks, uh, or no, sorry, are organic clicks to Google sites. So Google searches that take you to mm. Google. So people searching Google to find Google. Like we talked about, the, yes. the inactive manager accounts. Coming. And then only 0.1% were paid clicks to Google sites. So about half of all searches on Google now, you don't even have to leave Google because they're pulling so much information in there. There's a big controversy this mm-hmm. last week with Genius, the lyrics 
website that does all the music lyrics and Google also yes. does a lot of lyrics now and Genius isn't very happy because you can get most of what you need. I'll actually look at that while I'm DJing. I'll do a search and uh, pull up the lyrics to make sure that the song is appropriate if it's a song that I don't know for mm -hmm. whatever in environment I'm in. Yeah, and s some of you out there may be saying, who cares? What's the big deal? Well, the problem is, is when Google is scraping all this information and presenting it on their website or their page, that means you don't have to click through to visit the origination website, which may have advertising or opportunities to market or uh, some um, subscription-based content that's there that they want you to take advantage of. They're cutting the content creators out of the process. Yes. And that's very nefarious. Yes. Because yeah. they're benefiting by keeping you on the Google site. And showing you more Google ads there. So, um, yeah, interesting little report. You can take a look at it. Apple is expanding their authorized repairs to a 1,000 Best Buy stores. Yeah, this is crazy. So... You may have experienced, you go into an Apple store and this is, it's like this now. It did not used to be. Even trying to schedule something with their application that they, yeah. the Apple, so it's bonkers. You have to like call somebody or you do something and they, it, it's a whole process. And if you, heaven forbid, you walk into the store with a repair needing done, they'll be like, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. You wanted it done this month? Yeah. Like, what? Who are you? So uh, the experience has not been that great for last minute service, like mm -hmm. I need it now type of stuff. So expanding into a thousand Best Buy stores, how convenient would it be for me to just go down the street to Best Buy to know and trust that they're yeah. an Apple authorized repair center. They could do the work. I don't have to wade through all the teenagers who just want to see what the new iPhone looks like or all the grandmas who want to buy something for their whatever. I just go right to the Best Buy, get my repair done, and I'm out of there. Yeah. So this is very appealing to me. Yeah. And there's a lot of places that don't have Apple stores where you do have a Best Buy. And um, yes. I think Apple realizes there is a huge influx with their super cheap battery replacement program. Mm -hmm. They got overwhelmed. And so they've really been looking at... The stores are so full, you can barely walk yeah. in them. Yeah. So how can we disperse some of this uh, need out and they already have the relationship with Best Buy, the mm -hmm. little Apple kiosks and everything yeah. in there. So I think this is a really great thing and gives you some more options on a pain point with Apple. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a mid or a 2015 MacBook Pro, mine is a 2014, oh, sadly. They're, I was going to ask you if you were as qualified. Yes. Uh, they've done a battery recall. I guess there's been some issues with them. So there's a link in the show notes you can go if you have one that was made in 2015, and uh, check your serial number and see if they will replace your battery for you. Robocalls. We all hate robocalls. Mm, we, I, I got, well, I don't know if it's a robocall today, but I got a text from an unknown number with the link. And oh, I'm like, yikes. No, thank you. No, thank you. But the robocalls have been a big problem. Well, I have a feeling this might help get it fixed. There was a big report that came out about how robocalls are overwhelming hospitals and patients, mm. uh, which is a health crisis. You think a yeah. hospital, they need to be able to answer their phones, and if they're getting all these robocalls, and they're not knowing which numbers are calling them if somebody they have needs to something. They answer it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, some pretty ridiculous numbers in there, thousands of robocalls um, that go from one phone line to the next through a hospital, and it... That is not what a hospital uh, needs to be working on. So hopefully this something, it usually takes something serious, mm -hmm. something like this to really get this robocall stuff figured out because they keep trying things and it just doesn't seem to work. You know who could solve this problem? The carriers. <laughs> AT&T, <laughs> Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile. <sighs> they could get rid of this problem overnight, but they choose not to because it's a big source of income for them. So I think it's going to take Congress to enact some laws to put them out of business. And of course, yeah. uh, the foreign stuff, you can't really control that, but it has to go through the local carriers to get to you. So anyway, yeah. I think it needs to be their responsibility, their problem to fix. It's a problem they created. Yeah. And uh, the Tufts Medical Center is what this is based off of. And administrators registered more than 4,500 calls in a two-hour period. Mm. Just horrible stuff. Uh, not horrible stuff in our segment we like to call Stuff My Wife Cares About. <laughs> Harry, Potter, Harry Potter Wizards Unite, now available yes. on iOS and Android. I 
was able to resist the yes. temptation to download this game. I have way too much other stuff going on. I, I was going to download it. I didn't want to put it on my iPad. I was using my iPad mm. at the time. And I'm like, well, I'll do it on my phone later. And I, I had the beta on there. And I, w- I didn't really want to mess with it. Yeah. So I, too, wow. abstained from downloading the it. The only two techies in yeah. the world that have not downloaded this but, game yet. But probably this week I will download it and try it out. I just yeah. wanted to give it some room to breathe and figure it out and stuff. So. Yeah, so I want to rush hastily into it. Quick reminder: this is uh, made by the same company as Pokemon Go, and it's just a much improved, from what I've heard, Harry Potter version of this with the mm-hmm. augmented reality. You do battles, you get stuff, you collect stuff. Uh, you can spend money in app purchases, of course. And from the sounds of it, I was looking around a little bit this morning. It sounds like it is hugely popular. I don't know if it'll get to. The, that initial Pokemon Go status, but right. um, if there is something that compares to Pokemon Go in fandom, it would be the Harry Potter world. Well, I would say Harry Potter probably exceeds popularity. This of is Pokemon. true. Uh, security and privacy stories. You know, we talk about all these ransomwares. There's one called Gian Crab or Gand Crab mm, um, that has caused millions of dollars of ransoms and issues over the last, I think, year or so, uh, there's been a new free tool released that will reverse the ransomware. So if you get hit by it, it encrypts everything. You can download this and unencrypt it, and you don't have to pay the ransom, which is Hmm. uh, very cool. It's very hard to do because encryption is uh, secure for a reason, and so to reverse that. But very cool to hear there's a tool for that. A Florida city paid six hundred grand to the hackers to get out. So they were reading the stories about Baltimore and how many millions and how much problems that's caused. So they just paid it off and they paid the 600,000 said, not us, just not give us, us our data back. And uh, NASA was hacked by a rogue Raspberry Pi. We've talked about these, hmm. they're these little mini computers. Somehow one got put into NASA. Somebody stole Mars data. How you think about it in your head, you're like, how does somebody hack NASA? It's NASA, but they're focused on Mars, not their internal security. It was sitting in there for a year taking data out of there. When you have your head in the clouds, things are going to happen on the ground. That's all I got to say. Oh, yes. And speaking of Raspberry Pis, a quick sidestep. Uh, They have just released the new Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which frustrates me because I have the Raspberry Pi 3 and I have not used it as much as I would have liked to. And this one's one better. Yes. So what Uh, what advantages of the 4 are there over the 3? And this is coming from a person who has no idea what's inside them. Yes. So these are very small computers. They cost about $35. And this new one, they've improved. You can do two monitors. It's got mini HDMI on there. It's got USB-C, USB 3 faster processor. So the um, Raspberry Pi Foundation or whoever mm-hmm. it is, it's kind of this open source project. You can do all kinds of little projects with it. You put and Linux on it. And yeah. It, it really could be used as a full bore computer. It really could. And I that's what I should do some testing with mine. I did. I built one as a uh, popular thing as a retro pie where you can make it into a retro gaming system. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of different uses for them, but at $35, it's a really great way to get into something and play around. You can put an SD card in there for storage. Uh, so, yeah, right. new processor, more RAM. And are these just widely available now? You can buy them now? or are they Yes, kind of- I, they're starting to roll them out, so they might be low on stock right now. But okay. it is the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The way I bought mine was on Amazon. You can buy a little kit where there's like a 3D printed case, and you get ah. a couple cables and a charger for it and everything. Uh, but very cool little devices. And if you have a kid, this would be a great way to get them into computing because there's a lot of projects you can do with it. Uh, so that's Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, our bonus odd take of the week, Dave, mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this one this week. It's a three-minute video, and I was tempted to play the whole thing uh, during the podcast, but it is a video put out by GE, Okay, and they make smart light bulbs, the GE light bulbs. And they bring good things to life is it, all I really know. This, this they do. Now, this video, you, I really encourage you to go watch it because it is so painful. <laughs> it is how to reset... The light, these GE light bulbs. Because they're smart. They have like a computer in them. Yes. So okay. if you need to factory reset it or whatever, and it walks you through in live time, turn on the light for two seconds. Turn off the light for eight seconds. Turn on the light for eight seconds. Turn off the light for two seconds. <laughs> and it waits Turn the it whole... on for eight seconds. Yes. In real time. 
uh, and then turn it off for two seconds. And there's like 10 steps and then it'll flash a couple times and you reset. So you, you have to really be watching it closely. And if you miss, I don't know what the tolerances are yeah. on these seconds. It wasn't four seconds. And so you have to start over again. So, so that's How the would problem you know? with these smart devices. Like they didn't think to put it like a reset button on there. So Just you have to go through this there. insane process of turning your light yeah. on and off and sit there for probably a minute. And then if it doesn't work the first time, that probably means you have a different firmware. So you have to do it a different way. Mm. Try that. So just like the the folks over at Circle who made their Circle product square, yes. um, GE needs to, I need to make a, a consulting firm yes. that's something like how not to do dumb stuff. Uh, or things that don't make sense. And I'll just be the guy who looks at their products and go, that's stupid. <laughs> I mean, and they can pay me for it. Yeah, I think we've talked about, we had some great business name for that of <laughs> uh, stupid.com or something yeah. like that. Business, your yeah. stupid business consulting. Yeah. Uh, obvious business consulting. Uh, you know what else is free business consulting? Our pick. So the week. So Nate, a couple weeks ago, I picked up something, a little something off the interwebs. We talk about this company a lot. A little company called Amazon.com. Oh, yeah. They make a variety of products that you can connect to your smart speakers, your TVs, and stuff like that. I got an email from their sister site, Woot.com. Mm-hmm. This is a company they bought that is basically a clearinghouse for old junk or whatever they don't Daily want. Daily deal, like yeah. Mad.com that we yeah. talked about. They have all this discounted Highly stuff discounted there. products. And so what came up on the list of on the email? It was a Fire TV Cube. Hmm. Are you familiar with the Fire TV Cube? Yes, I've seen those. I tried, I had um, a couple years ago, the Fire TV Stick, just right. the little tiny one, but this is the more robust yeah. device. Now, they don't want you to make this comparison, but it's basically an Amazon Echo and a Fire Stick. If they had a baby, mm. it would look like the Fire TV Cube. Um, you can replace your Echo if you have one in your household, and you could replace your Fire Stick because both capabilities are found okay. in this product. They normally cost as much as like an Apple TV or a Google TV type device, 120 bucks. It's like their normal price. And I was, I would never spend that on this thing. They had them half price at 60 bucks. Oh, wow. I was like, well, for 60 bucks, that's cheaper than the new Apple TV. And it's got a lot of the similar functionality. So I'm going to try it out. So I got one and I'm, I'm happy to say that it works mostly as advertised. There are a few uh, bits that are not as highly polished as you would expect from like an Apple experience. Mm -hmm. Um, A little clunky. Uh, The speaker that I have connected sometimes disconnects. But overall, if you can find one of these devices for cheap, really the price of of an Echo Dot, Mm -hmm. a little bit more than an Echo Dot, it's worth getting because um, it connects to your TV connects to your soundbar or any other speaker system that you have. And you can say, hey, turn on my TV. Turns on your TV. You can say, hey, go to Netflix and do this thing. Go to Spotify, play this song. You can basically control everything with your voice. The only thing I don't like is that the remote control it comes with does not have a volume control on it. Oh, So you're reliant to either use your voice to turn it up and down or your other remote control to turn it up and down. But Amazon will sell you, I think, for $15 or $20 a revised remote control, which includes oh, volume. Great. So you can spend an additional 15, 20 bucks for that. Or I, you could buy my pick of the week, that $10 universal remote that would yes. work with it, but it doesn't have the voice control. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's uh, a compromise either way. But uh, if you can find one of these cheap and you don't have another Roku box or a, a smart TV that has all the features that you want or an Apple TV, take a look at the Fire Cube. Now, yeah. I think they probably haven't been selling these very well or they're coming out with a new model or something that they got rid of them for so cheap. Yeah. But if you're looking for a fun device, if you're fully integrated into the Amazon lifestyle, you you read Kindle books and you have Amazon Prime Video and all these things, it works quite nicely. Nice. Well, my pick of the week is a website that I found via previous pick of the week, Product Hunt, where people mm. submit new stuff or new products and then it gets voted up on there. And the website is an app. Dot L-I. I have never heard of this before. No, either had I. And it is a directory of minimal and useful single purpose apps. Hmm. So it's a great idea. You know, most people are looking for new apps, but it's so hard to even know where to go besides the Not Nerd podcast. <laughs> but this has just a pretty much endless list of apps that are for a very specific 
purpose. So some of them, uh, there's one, Mr. Mood, a simple and beautiful daily mood tracker. Mm. Usage, a simple menu bar app for tracking your application application usage. Um, there is one that I found on here, which I was interested in, Perfect Horizon. Straighten and rotate your videos just like you're used to do with photos. So if you name describes it all. If you shoot a beautiful sunset and your horizon's a little crooked, you can go on this app, straighten it out. Hmm. The strike through text generator. Sometimes you want to, like on Facebook, you would love to be able to put some text in there, but like say, strike it through, put the line mm -hmm. through the middle, like, oh, I didn't mean to say that. I really meant, there, here's there a generator. Go. Man, so, everything um, you could ever want. And that one's web-based. You can do it from any platform. Yeah, uh, Muzzle, a Mac app to silence embarrassing notifications while screen sharing. That's always a good one. Uh, but yeah, so they just have a ton of apps on there and people... Um, I don't know if you can vote on them per se, but they do show how many people have clicked on it. So it kind of gives you a little yeah. bit of a rating as to, oh, this is something that people seem to like. Uh, so there's some stuff in the list that we've talked about before as well. But uh, if you're just looking for something, because some of these apps out there, they just do so much that you never even know where to start. Right. Uh, but you just need a simple solution for something. Check unapp.li. Okay, our Amazon pick of the week. We've been talking a lot about Amazon today, and we are Amazon affiliates. Uh, so any of the links we provide, we get a little kickback if you go and buy things there. And you guys do, and we love going to look and looking on the anonymous report to see mm -hmm. what's been purchased. Well, this week we've got the Wink Rust Stain Remover 32 ounce. Dave, was this you where you were removing <laughs> it wasn't, some rust? I was, I was on pins and needles, is he going to say? An Anafi drone uh, motor replacement. For, I, I yeah. saw that on one on there, and I was able to track that back to you since I don't... I'm guessing nobody else has one of those drones and knowing you've had some crashes with yeah. yours and maybe they need a new motor. It's a little embarrassing, but uh, it, I, had to, I had to buy one. This is a very highly rated stain, rust stain remover. So mm. you get around your sink, wherever okay. it is. I'm thinking my clothes don't get rust on them yeah, very often. Well, but... maybe they do. As a techie, that's probably not. <laughs> hopefully your computer's not getting rusty. I'm that You've got bigger problems. bolts in my pocket or something. Yeah, but uh, somebody went and bought. If you, if it was you, let us know. Let us know what you're yeah. taking that rust off, how it works, because uh, I'm sure there's plenty of people that need to remove some rust at times. Um, it comes in a brown bottle. It is a 32-ounce bottle, so that's mm. quite Quite a bit. Yeah. Dave, what would you pay for some rust stain remover? I'm glad you gave me the size because I was going to say, if I know you, you're probably going to ask me what this thing costs, but I don't know it unless I know the size. So 32 ounces, that is quite a bit of liquid. I'm assuming it's like a spray bottle. Is that the type of thing? Uh, it looks like you can put that on there. It's just a plastic bottle with a screw yeah. on top. Hmm. I'm going to, I got a number in my head and I, I don't, it came out of nowhere. $17.99. Oh man. Well, for eight dollars and five cents, you can buy the thirty-two ounce. Wow! Bottle. So uh, I, Amazon Prime I've free delivery Wednesday if you order within seven hours fifty-two minutes. Now, here's a quick pro tip: some to pay attention to. You might go, "Hey, you know what? I've got a lot of rust stains. I'm going to buy two bottles. That'll be a better deal." Yeah. It's not. It's no? twenty-four dollars for two bottles. Uh, so it would be sixteen dollars if you buy them singly. If you buy them two, it's twenty-four. So you pay an extra eight dollars to get next to buy two bottles at yeah. once. Well, I uh, tell you, shoppers, be careful. You go into grocery stores, the same thing applies. Yeah. Two for $5 and you rip the thing off and it says one for a dollar. So you got to be careful out there. Yeah. So the rust stain remover... With that, we are going to wrap up this episode. We have rambled on about all this valuable technology information. Your brains are full. They're, it's time for us to move they're on. They're about ready to explode. You need to rest your, your tech brain. Yes, yes. Uh, if you do need a little more tech, check out our YouTube channel. Check out the website. Uh, if you enjoy the podcast, leave a review. But more importantly, tell a friend. You know somebody that would enjoy this podcast or should enjoy this podcast because mm -hmm. they're always asking you tech questions and you know so much from listening already. Uh, so tell them about the podcast. Show them how to sign up for the podcast on their phone. Maybe they should watch the video that you made. I <laughs> did for one of my clients for Consistent Tech. I actually helped create a video uh, helping people know how. So I'll put a link to that in the show yeah. notes. You can watch to, Nate show you how to do a podcast. Yeah, yeah. And just replace the Fab Lab podcast with Not Nerd Podcast and you'll be subscribed in no time. I couldn't help but notice a few of Not Nerd 
nerd screenshots yes, on the screen. Yes, I just it's... happened to have not nerd on my screen as I was doing the screen recordings. Um, but yeah, and check out our Patreon too. We think we are very thankful for our Patreon subscribers that give us a little money each month to help keep this show going. Now get out there and tech better. What to pick? What to pick? What to pick? I'm going to let you do it because I read through it and I'm not exactly sure what I'm talking about. So, (laughs) and I'm going to cut this part out where I admitted I don't really know anything about this thing. Uh...